Welcome back to the Introduction to Organic Chemistry series, Part 5 of 5. In this video, I will be discussing the following topics. Lewis structure, drawing organic molecules, and exceptions to the octet rule. There are a number of different ways to represent organic molecules. I will use propane as an example to show you each of these methods. A molecular formula simply tells you what atoms are in this molecule and how many atoms of each. A molecule like propane will have three carbons and eight hydrogens, written as C3H8. The condensed structure or condensed structural formula tells you how the atoms are connected in the molecule. In propane, it is written as CH3, CH2, CH3, showing that this molecule is broken into three carbon groups, each with its specific number of hydrogens. The Lewis structure is the most complex, but it also gives you the most information because it tells you exactly how the atoms are connected to each other. As you can see, the Lewis structure takes the condensed structure and expands it out, showing that each of my carbons has enough hydrogens to fill the missing octet bonds, and this will be looked at in greater detail shortly. Recall that the concept behind covalent bonding is to allow an atom to achieve a full octet without accepting or giving up any of its own electrons. We can see a couple of quick examples. H2 gas is made by a hydrogen bound to another hydrogen. Because it only has an s orbital, it's only looking for a total of two electrons, which is fulfilled by one bond between the two hydrogens. We apply the same theory for a molecule like O2. First you draw the oxygens showing the valence electrons for each. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. In order for oxygen to achieve a full octet, it will require two bonds between two sets of lone electrons. Now each oxygen has eight electrons. A molecule like nitrogen will require additional bonds because it only has five electrons. In order for nitrogen to achieve a full octet, it will require three bonds, so we bond each of the lone electrons three times, giving me the nitrogen molecule. Our next example, CH4, is something you've seen previously. We start with a carbon that has sp3 hybridization, giving me four lone electrons, and we use hydrogens which each have one electron requiring one additional bond. This way, by making a bond between every hydrogen to a lone carbon electron, carbon fills its octet of eight, hydrogen fills its octet of two, and we have a complete molecule. You may be asked to give a Lewis structure of a condensed structural formula, and this is very simple. You start with each group of the molecule that you see and simply expand the bonds to show exactly where the atoms are located. For this example, I see that I have a carbon chain made out of four carbons, so I will start with those. Some students find it very helpful to number the carbons to make sure that you don't mix it up or leave out any atoms. Once I have my carbon chain, I will look at what's directly attached to the carbon, and I will start with the chlorine that is attached to carbon 3, and then I will simply fill in my hydrogens. When you're drawing an organic molecule, it's acceptable to draw a line representing a hydrogen without actually drawing an atom there. For a proper structure though, you want to make sure that all your atoms are visible. Drawing a Lewis structure from a molecular formula is going to be a little bit trickier but still doable. The order in which you connect your atoms matter. Now, hydrogen, because it's a filler, will always go last. So for the water molecule, I will start with my oxygen and draw its six valence electrons. Notice again we have two sets of lone pair electrons and two unpaired electrons. Hydrogens each have just one valence electron, which means that I can bond a lone oxygen electron to hydrogen and my molecule is complete. If you count the atoms around the oxygen, we see that we have a full octet. We have two and four for the lone pairs. We have two in the first bond to hydrogen and two more electrons in the second bond, giving me a total of eight electrons for oxygen, which means it now has a full octet. Now let's look at ammonia. Notice that we have nitrogen and hydrogen. We'll start with nitrogen and draw all its lone electrons. 
We'll draw the hydrogens to correspond with each lone electron on the nitrogen, letting me put a bond between each hydrogen and nitrogen electron to complete nitrogen's octet. That's two, four, six, eight. Nitrogen has eight valence electrons. It has a full octet. Drawing organic molecules is simple when you follow this simple checklist. Verify your atoms, your octet rule, and your electrons, and you can be pretty certain that your molecule is drawn correctly. Always start with your least electronegative atom, other than hydrogen. In this case, I will start with carbon. I draw my three carbon skeleton, and then start filling in the hydrogens around them. The first step in my checklist, atoms are complete. To fill in the octet, I will first draw a preliminary bond between each of the atoms and then count the electrons to see if any are missing. We know that hydrogen can only make one bond for a complete octet, so every hydrogen here is good to go. And carbon can make four bonds, so once again our octets are complete. To verify the electrons, I will use some simple mathematics. This molecule is composed of three carbons and four valence electrons each. We have eight hydrogens and one valence electron each. When I add them together, I get 12 and eight for a total of 20 electrons. I will count the electrons on my molecule by twos, counting every bond or lone pair to verify that I get all of them. My tally gives me 20 electrons, which is what I expect, and so my molecule is good to go. Every rule has exceptions and the octet rule is no different. The first exception are the atoms in group 3A. These atoms are relatively small and can therefore be happy with just six electrons rather than eight in its valence shell. The second exception to the octet rule are the atoms located in the third principal energy level. Phosphorus and sulfur particularly will come up in organic chemistry. Because these atoms are in the third principal energy level, they can invoke their d orbitals and have more than eight electrons when forming bonds. Phosphorus can get a total of five bonds for 10 electrons, and sulfur can get a total of six bonds for 12 valence electrons. The two atoms in group 3A were boron and aluminum. Let's look at BF3. We have a boron in the center surrounded by three fluorines. Boron initially has just three valence electrons and fluorine provides another three for a total of six valence electrons. The molecule AlCl3 behaves in the same way. Aluminum starts out with three valence electrons. Each of the chlorines provide three valence electrons giving me a total of six electrons for aluminum in AlCl3. Let's look at phosphoric acid in an example where it has more than eight electrons in its valence shell. Before we start, let's take a quick tally of electrons. We have hydrogen times three and one electron each. We have phosphorus times one and five electrons. Then we have oxygen times four and six electrons. Adding them up, I get a total of 32 electrons. To draw this molecule, we'll refer to our checklist to ensure that we cover all our bases. We'll start with atoms. Phosphorus is the least electronegative atom other than hydrogen, so we put that in the center, and surround it by four oxygens. I arbitrarily add three hydrogens next to three of the oxygens, and step one, my atoms are all present. To ensure the octets, I will first draw preliminary bonds between all of the atoms. Then I will count my electrons and fill in what's missing to complete all the octets. For an atom like oxygen, which already has two bonds, I add four additional electrons to complete an octet of eight. For the oxygen that only has one bond, I have to add a total of six electrons to complete its octet. Hydrogen atoms have a complete octet when they have one bond, which leaves me with phosphorus that already has a complete octet. We can check off octet on the checklist. And now let's look at electrons. 
After counting all the electrons, I get a total of 32, which is the 32 electrons I expect to have. Another correct way to represent this structure is to remove one of the lone pairs on oxygen and put it as a bond between oxygen and phosphorus. Even though phosphorus now has 10 electrons around it, oxygen still has a complete octet. And because phosphorus is an exception to the octet rule, this is also an acceptable form of phosphoric acid. Looking back at my checklist, the electrons are complete and this molecule is good to go. For our final example, let's look at sulfuric acid or H2SO4. A quick electron tally gives me hydrogen times two with one electron each, sulfur times one with six electrons, and oxygen times four with six electrons each. Adding them up, we have a total of 32 electrons. With my checklist on the right, I'm ready to begin. I start with sulfur, which is the least electronegative other than hydrogen. I surround it by four oxygens, and then add two arbitrary hydrogens on the oxygen. All my atoms are now present. I connect all the atoms with preliminary bonds, and will then add electrons to ensure complete octets. After adding electrons, every atom has a complete octet. Now I will count my electrons to see that they add up to 32. My electrons add up to 32, which equals the 32 expected electrons, and so my checklist is complete. However, just like phosphorus, there is another way to represent this molecule. The two oxygen that have three lone electron pairs can also be represented by removing those two lone pairs and replacing it as another bond between each oxygen to sulfur. Oxygen still has a full octet and sulfur now has a total of 12 electrons. We'll discuss this concept in a lot greater detail when we discuss formal charge in an upcoming video. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to see all five Intro to Orgo videos to ensure that when you start studying organic chemistry you have a thorough understanding of the chemistry required to be able to ace the material. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below or send me an email and I will respond as soon as I can. Email your questions to tutorials at leahforsci.com. You can find additional study information and more tutorials on my website at www dot lea spelled l e a h the number four s c i dot com and you can also find me right here on my YouTube channel lea for sci tutorials.